Hi everyone. Welcome back to Frappe School. This is the fourth chapter of our inventory management course. In this chapter, we will be discussing purchase receipts and landed cost vouchers. By the end of this chapter, you will be able to understand what are purchase receipts, what is the significance of a landed cost voucher, how to record purchase receipts and landed cost vouchers in ERP next. Purchase receipts are one of the main transactions in a stock module. A purchase receipt is also known as good received note or GRN. A purchase receipt records the receipt of goods. It records the item and quantity received, rate or valuation at which the item is received and also the warehouse at which the item is received. Now, when we talk about the valuation of goods, the valuation is not just the purchase value of goods. It also includes the fret cost, taxes or duties paid to procure the goods from international markets. Therefore, a mechanism is required to add these additional costs to the valuation of goods. This is done by the help of landed cost vouchers. The term landed cost was coined in the 15th century when the goods were transported via sea and land at the port. Therefore, the cost at which the goods were received on land, including additional expenses like shipping costs, duties, etc., came to be known as landed cost. Landed cost vouchers let you add the additional expenses to the valuation of an item and therefore give you an accurate costing which would otherwise be reported as indirect expenses. As the cost is reported in a more accurate manner, the profitability is shown accurately as well. In the following part of the chapter, we will learn how to record purchase receipt in ERP next and how to create a landed cost voucher to add the additional expenses to the valuation of item. Purchase receipts are made when we accept items from our supplier. They are usually made against purchase orders. In ERP Next, we can even receive purchase receipts standalone without purchase orders. Let's see how. First, let's see how to create purchase receipts directly. We can find the purchase receipt list under Stock Transactions in the Stock module or search for it using the awesome bar. Here, we can see a list of all previous purchase receipts for our organization. To create a new one, we can click on Add Purchase Receipt. Once the document opens, we can check the posting date and time. By default, the posting date and time are selected from when you create this purchase receipt. The Is Return checkbox is used if these are items we are returning to the supplier. Then, we will need to select a supplier. This will help us fetch further details. Next, we need to add items to this purchase receipt. We can fetch items in two ways, from either a purchase invoice or a purchase order. The Get Items button has both the options. For this example, let's get items from a purchase order. Now, all pending items from purchase orders linked to this particular supplier will show up in the items table. We can add them and set their quantities. We can even select a supplier deliver note if our supplier has added one. Next, we can tag warehouses. There are two fields, Accepted Warehouse and Rejected Warehouse. These set the accepted and rejected warehouses in each item in the Items table. If any items are rejected, they go to the Rejected Warehouse and respectively for the Accepted Warehouse. Let's add the warehouses here. If we want to individually edit these warehouse values in any particular item, then we can go to the Items table, select a particular item and edit it to add specific values. 
There are various other sections in the purchase receipt document. Firstly, we can tag accounting dimensions like branch, projects or cost centers. We can add address and contact details by selecting the supplier's address, contact person and shipping and billing addresses. We saw how to create a purchase receipt from scratch. Now let's see how we can create one using an existing purchase order. We can access the purchase order list by searching for it in the awesome bar. Here we can see a list of all previously created purchase orders along with their statuses. We can open the one we want and use the create button and click on purchase receipt. When the purchase receipt opens, we can see that the supplier and item table is already fetched and filled from the purchase order. Then we can add all other necessary details and save this purchase receipt. After we submit any purchase receipt, a stock ledger entry is created for each item and it is added to the warehouse for all accepted items. For rejected items, stock entries are created. The pending quantity is then updated in the purchase order linked to the purchase receipt. We saw how to create purchase receipts for stock items. But let's see what happens when we create a purchase receipt for a service item. As we can see here, we have created a purchase receipt for a service item. Once submitted, this won't show up in the stock ledger as an invert stock item. Let's see the stock ledger. Now let's move on to landed cost vouchers. A landed cost voucher lets us add additional costs to an item so that we can get a more accurate pricing. These additional costs can come from various sources like taxes or transport. Let's see how we can create one in ERP next. We can access a list of landed cost vouchers by searching for it in the awesome bar. Here we can see all previously created vouchers and create a new one by clicking on add landed cost voucher. Here we can see that the series, posting date and company details are automatically added. Next. In the purchase receipt table, we can select a receipt document type and select the specific document with supplier details. Here, we can either select a purchase receipt or a purchase invoice. We can select multiple documents if required. These will fetch the posting date, supplier details and grand total amount. Let's try adding a purchase receipt. In the purchase receipt items table, we can use the Get Items from Purchase Receipts button to get the items from the selected purchase receipts or invoices that we want to apply the charges to. If there is any particular item that these charges don't apply to, we can simply remove it from the items table. Now, we can move on to adding the additional charges in the Taxes and Charges table here. To add any expense, we will need to select an expense account where we want to record this charge. Add a description and add the amount. Let's add some additional charges here. The total taxes and charges will now show below and we can choose if we want these charges to be divided by quantity, by amount or manually. Now we can save and permanently submit this landed cost voucher. Once we submit the landed cost voucher, the rate of the items is recalculated based on the landed costs. If we are using perpetual inventory, the system will post ledger entries to debit the warehouse account and credit the expense account that we have specified. Let's have a look. 
If we know some of the charges beforehand, we can even add a landed cost in the purchase receipt itself. Let's navigate to the purchase receipt list and open a purchase receipt. We can scroll down to the taxes and charges section and add any charges or extra taxes in the table. Charges paid to the supplier can be tagged as total and valuation, while charges to third parties can be tagged as valuation. Once the purchase receipt is submitted, these charges will be considered in calculating the landed cost of all items and will be used to find the item's valuation rate. This brings us to the end of the fourth chapter of Inventory Management course. I hope this helped you understand how to record purchase receipts and landed cost vouchers in ERP Next. You can learn more about ERP Next on docs.erpnext.com. In the next chapter, we will discuss stock entries. Thank you.